Imagine a metal born from fire, a metal so strong it can survive the screaming heat of a jet engine, yet light enough to rest on your wrist as a watch or the frame of your glasses. A metal that never rusts, even after decades underwater, and is so safe that doctors place it inside the human body. This is titanium. But for most of human history, nobody even knew it existed. For centuries, it hid in plain sight, buried deep inside black sand and dull grey rocks. People walked across it without realising that beneath their feet lay one of the most extraordinary elements on Earth. It would take a curious clergyman, a forgotten notebook, and more than a hundred years of failure before humanity finally learned how to unleash its power. The story begins in 1791, in the peaceful countryside of Cornwall, England. A local pastor named William Gregor had a quiet fascination with the natural world. In his spare time, he studied minerals and the strange metallic sands that collected near the streams around his village of Manacan. One afternoon, while examining a pile of dark sand, he noticed something unusual. It was heavy, slightly magnetic, and refused to behave like anything he had seen before. Gregor took it home to his small laboratory and began to experiment. He ground the sand, mixed it with acids, and heated it until it changed colour. The results stunned him. The sand contained traces of an unknown substance, an element no scientist had described before. Excited by his discovery, he named it Manaconite, after his home village. He wrote to scientific journals, but few noticed. His discovery faded quietly into history, another overlooked curiosity in an age obsessed with gold and iron. Four years later, in 1795, across Europe in Berlin, the German chemist Martin Heinrich Klaproth made a similar discovery. Klaproth had already found other elements, like uranium and zirconium. When he analysed a strange mineral called rutile, he realised it contained the same mysterious element Gregor had found. But Klaproth saw something more. He recognised its potential strength, purity, and symbolic power. He decided to rename it Titanium, after the mighty titans of Greek mythology, the ancient giants who once challenged the gods. The name was perfect. It carried a sense of power, endurance, and untamed force. Yet, for more than a century, titanium would remain locked away inside its mineral prison. Unlike gold or silver, it never appeared in pure form. It clung stubbornly to oxygen, trapped within minerals like ilmenite and rutile. Scientists tried everything to extract it. Burning, melting, dissolving. But every attempt ended the same way. Failure. The moment titanium touched air, it reacted with oxygen and crumbled into brittle dust. It was as if the metal itself was alive, fighting anyone who tried to control it. Throughout the 1800s, chemists in laboratories across Europe tried to tame it. They produced tiny fragments, greyish, impure, weak, but nothing close to the strong light metal they imagined. Decade after decade, titanium remained a scientific dream, a ghost of the periodic table, powerful yet unreachable. Then came the 20th century. The world was at war, and innovation became a matter of survival. In the 1940s, a metallurgist named William Justin Kroll, working in Delaware, was experimenting with ways to extract pure metals more efficiently. His idea was bold. Use magnesium in a sealed, oxygen-free chamber to separate titanium from its ore. The process was dangerous and unpredictable. But when the smoke cleared, Kroll found a strange, spongy mass, pure titanium, finally freed from its bonds. The method worked, and it would change everything. The Kroll process, as it became known, marked the dawn of the titanium age. From that point on, titanium story transformed from scientific curiosity to industrial revolution. To understand how titanium is made, we start with the Earth itself. Titanium isn't mined as shiny metal. It begins its journey as ordinary-looking sand and rock. The most common sources are rutile and ilmenite, found in large deposits across Australia, South Africa, Canada, India and China. These minerals look plain to the eye, but within their crystalline structure lies one of the strongest substances nature has ever formed. 
The mind ore is taken to massive industrial plants, where the transformation begins. It's mixed with carbon and chlorine gas at high temperatures, over 900 degrees Celsius, producing a liquid compound called titanium tetrachloride, or TICL4. It looks clear and harmless, but in truth, it's dangerously reactive. The instant it's exposed to moisture or air, it bursts into a white cloud of smoke. Scientists handle it inside sealed systems, wearing protective suits and working under strict safety rules. The next stage is where raw chemistry turns into art. The titanium tetrachloride is fed into large sealed reactors and mixed with molten magnesium. This step removes the chlorine and leaves behind pure titanium, appearing as a porous, greyish material known as titanium sponge. It's not yet metal as we know it, soft, crumbly, fragile, but it's the beginning. The sponge is collected, melted in massive vacuum furnaces, and purified again and again until every trace of oxygen and nitrogen is gone. Finally, it's poured into molds and cooled into ingots, which are then shaped into sheets, rods, wires, or blocks, the raw foundation for thousands of technologies. And here's something most people don't realize. The same chemical process that makes titanium metal also creates titanium dioxide, a bright white powder used everywhere. It's what makes your toothpaste gleam, your sunscreen blocks ultraviolet rays, and your house paint stays bright and reflective. Unknowingly, most people use titanium daily. So why do scientists and engineers go through so much trouble for this metal? The answer lies in its unmatched combination of properties. Titanium is almost as strong as steel, but weighs about 45% less. That means it delivers incredible strength without heavy weight, a revolutionary advantage for airplanes, rockets, and spacecraft. Every gram saved means longer range, higher speed, and lower fuel use. But strength is just the beginning. Titanium is almost immune to corrosion. Where iron rusts and aluminum weakens, titanium remains untouched. Salt water, acid, and moisture can't harm it. That's why it's used in deep-sea submarines, naval ships, and pipelines exposed to harsh environments. It endures where other metals fail. It's also biocompatible. The human body accepts it naturally. That makes it ideal for medical implants, artificial joints, heart valves, and dental screws. Surgeons rely on titanium because it doesn't cause allergic reactions or rejection. Once inside the body, it bonds with bone and becomes part of the person, literally merging human and metal. And perhaps most astonishing of all, titanium is heat resistant. It stays strong at temperatures that would destroy other metals. Inside jet engines, titanium blades spin at thousands of revolutions per minute, facing infernos hotter than lava. In a spacecraft, it shields astronauts from the heat of re-entry. Even in the most extreme conditions, titanium holds its shape, strength, and shine. When all these traits combine, lightness, strength, corrosion resistance, biocompatibility, and heat endurance, you get a true super metal. A material so advanced that it changed the design of everything from aircraft and submarines to prosthetic limbs and sports gear. But this perfection has a price. Producing titanium is expensive. Every step from mining to refining to melting demands enormous energy and precision. It can't be handled like other metals. It must be forged in carefully controlled environments, free from even a trace of oxygen. That's why titanium costs far more than steel or aluminum, limiting its use to critical applications, spacecraft, fighter jets, surgical tools, and luxury goods. Yet the story doesn't end there. Around the world, scientists are searching for new ways to make titanium cheaper and cleaner. Some are experimenting with plasma reduction and electrolytic extraction methods that could eliminate the costly Kroll process. Others are recycling titanium scrap from old aircraft and medical devices to reduce waste. If these new techniques succeed, titanium could revolutionize everyday life. 
Imagine cars built from titanium, light, efficient, and rust-proof. Imagine skyscrapers with titanium skeletons that never corrode, standing tall for centuries. Imagine an entire spacecraft built from titanium alloys, pushing humanity deeper into the solar system. Titanium's story is far from finished. From its discovery in the quiet fields of Cornwall, to its role in the engines of supersonic jets, it has always represented human curiosity and persistence. It's the metal that refused to be tamed, then became the backbone of modern technology. Today it lives everywhere, inside airplanes slicing through clouds, submarines crawling through ocean depths, and implants resting quietly within human bodies. It bridges nature and machines, past and future. From forgotten black sand to shining metal, titanium rose from invisibility to immortality. The titan's metal now powers our civilization. And as long as humans continue to search, invent, and dream, titanium will remain a symbol of what happens when we learn to unlock the hidden strength of the world beneath our feet. So the next time you touch a watch, fasten a bike frame, or glance at a white wall, remember, inside those ordinary things lies the legacy of a metal that once refused to reveal itself. Titanium, the invisible giant that became the heart of our future. If you enjoyed this story, share it and subscribe to Simple Things, Surprising Histories, where even the smallest object might hold the greatest story of all.